For shooting panoramas, you need two things, a phone that shoots them and a big open space like this. Framing up is really important. It's not enough in a panorama to have a big open space and just try and capture the whole thing. What you'll end up with is something that's indistinct, doesn't really do justice to your subject. So from here, we need to think really carefully about where we're starting and where we're finishing our panorama. Anything that includes too much foreground off to the sides of us is gonna make for a fairly indistinct looking frame. And what we want is this big open space just in front of us, just at this rough, this angle of view just here. Panorama modes on phones broadly all work in the same way. You'll have an indicator arrow on a line and as you move your phone across your panorama, the line moves up and down, reflecting your vertical movement. This little tracker here is gonna show us how much vertical movement we're introducing into our panorama. The more the phone moves up and down, the harder it's going to be for the phone to build a seamless looking shot. So as we come across, we can see that line moving, or we can see that white arrow moving up and down. And the idea as we move across is to keep it pointing straight along that yellow line to give us a nice, smooth looking, ultra wide frame. The more you move, the tighter your panorama is going to be and the tougher it's going to be for your phone to produce something that looks smooth and finished as a result. Another useful thing that this phone has as we move across is this live preview right here, which shows us our panorama building as we go. And what's really nice about that is that we can keep an eye on it and we can decide exactly the point when our panorama starts to be a little bit more cluttered, include a little bit too much of the foreground in there. The final thing to think about is vertical composition. The higher up, obviously, that we put our phone, the more sky we're going to have in the frame. And that gives us exposure problems because the phone is going to expose for the sky rather than the foreground. So as we come down, we can see the exposure changes. We get much more color and contrast into that foreground. It's always worth shooting these things a couple of different ways so you can decide what you like better once you get back somewhere where you can properly see what you've made. And I think that the trick here is remembering that less is more. The less that we move our phone around, the more interesting our panorama is going to be. It doesn't always need to be super wide, 180 degrees. So let's review the pictures that we've taken. We've got effectively two options here for composition. We've got this one, which has lots of sky at the top. And then option two is this one with much more foreground. And to be honest, I kind of like them both. This one, I think I really like this dramatic sky over the top. There's lots of definition and color in it. There's lots of shadow. The only thing that I like a little bit less is all of this foreground is obviously underexposed. This is quite an easy fix in most photo editors, including the kind of photo editors that you'll be able to get for your smartphone. So it's not a disaster. And I think the composition really works quite nicely, especially in terms of telling an interesting story about a big wide open space. The second option is this one where we've got the sky roughly, what, four fifths of the way up the frame, I suppose. And what I really like about this is there's still a decent amount of definition and detail in the sky but we've also got lots of colour in that foreground, which is, gives people a much more immediate sense of kind of where we were, what the weather was like, the kind of environment that we're in. We do have quite a lot of foreground in here, which to my eye is kind of spare. So this photo might be quite a good candidate for a vertical crop, just a third of the way up the frame to just kind of cut out all of this spare grass. And what that will give us is a super wide frame looking image um, that doesn't have loads of wasted detail. The only thing that I would say is that if you were putting this, for example, on a greetings card, all of this spare area down here at the bottom, it's a great place to put text.